My name is Sam Vaknin, and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. Leonardo da Vinci was a painter, sculptor, architect, cartographer, engineer, scientist, and inventor in the 15th century. He is the quintessential Renaissance man. Yet despite his genius, he referred to himself as sans the illiterate, the man without letters. And for good reason, until late in his life, Leonardo da Vinci was unable to read or write Latin, the language used by virtually all other Renaissance intellectuals, the lingua franca, the equivalent of English today. Nor was Leonardo da Vinci acquainted with mathematics until he reached the ripe old age of 30, that is, 3-0. Leonardo was born out of wedlock, but he was raised by his real father, a wealthy Florentine notary. He served at least 10 years, between 1466 and 1476, as Galzoni, apprentice, to Andrea del Verrocchio, and he painted details in Verrocchio's canvases. Only in 1478, when Leonardo was 26, did he become independent. Even so, Leonardo da Vinci was not off to an auspicious start. He never executed his first commission, for instance, the altarpiece in the chapel of the Palazzo Vecchio della Signoria, Florence's town hall. His first large paintings were left unfinished, the Adoration of the Magi and Saint Jerome, both of them dated 1481. Most of the sketches and studies for Leonardo's works of art and engineering are found on shopping lists, personal notes, and personal expenditure ledgers. No one was allowed to enter Leonardo's den, where he kept, according to Giorgio Vasari in The Lives of the Artists, a number of green and other kinds of lizards, crickets, serpents, butterflies, locusts, bats, and various strange creatures of this nature. Leonardo's clients were often dissatisfied with his glacial pace, his lack of professional discipline, and his inability to co conclude his assignments. Leonardo was frequently involved in litigation in the courts. The confraternity of the Immaculate Conception sued him when he failed to produce the Virgin on the Rocks, an altarpiece they commissioned from him in 1483. The court proceedings lasted ten years. The head of Jesus in the Last Supper was left blank, because Leonardo did not dare to paint a human model, nor did he trust his imagination sufficiently. Leonardo worked four years on the Mona Lisa, but never completed it. He carried it with him whenever he went. Leonardo's terracotta model of a colossal bronze sculpture of the father of his benefactor and employer, Ludovico Sforza, was used for target practice by invading French soldiers in 1499. The metal, which was supposed to go into this work of art, was molded into cannonballs. Leonardo was a member of the commission, which deliberated where to place Michelangelo's magnificent statue of David. He did not like Michelangelo to use an understatement, yet he did not recuse himself. Leonardo's cartographic work was so ahead of his time that the express highway from Florence to the sea, built in the 20th century, follows precisely the route of a canal that he envisioned. Leonardo's scientific investigations in anatomy, hydraulics, mechanics, ornithology, and botany are considered valuable to this very day. Bill Gates owns some of Leonardo's notebooks containing scientific data and observations. They are known as the Codex Hammer. But Leonardo's loyalties were fickle. He switched sides to the conquering French. And in 1506, he returned to Milan to work for its French governor, Charles d'Ambois. Later, Leonardo became court painter for King Louis XII of France, who at the time resided in Milan. In 1516, he relocated to France to serve King Francis I, and he died in France. Leonardo summed up the lessons of his art in a series of missives to his students, probably in Milan. These were later, in 1542, collected by his close associate, Francesco Melzi, as a treatise on painting, and they were published in print in 1651 and as late as 1817. Leonardo lives and rocks.